Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Dynamo video. In this one, we're talking about week seven in the NFL and some prize picks. Picks for you guys to consider. We have five really good picks for you guys that are all guys playing on Sunday. So let's get into these picks. I know a ton of you guys who watch the YouTube are in the Discord here, but if you're not, join up for free in the free channels of the Discord here. We got a ton of people posting slips and stuff they're liking, talking about the games in here and what prize picks plays they're going to go with. So definitely get in on the talk. Also going to be going big for NBA season coming up soon, which we're super excited about. We do also have a VIP section where we post our projections based on the models that have hit three for three two days in a row. Also, we have seven or eight cappers in there in the VIP who have been hitting slips consistently over the past few days, absolutely crushing it. You do get $10 off for watching the YouTube video if you wanna join up in that. It'll be linked down below as well. For this one, we're gonna start out with our first pick here, and we're going to go to a guy who's seen an increase in volume, Drake London here on the receptions at just three and a half against Tampa Bay. Taking this over, we think he's going to get at least four in this game. We're going to come over here to Outlier, which is a tool with a free trial that you can also try out if you are into looking at data and stuff behind some of these picks. So right off the bat, you can see over three and a half catches when you type in Drake London. Minus 130 on DraftKings, but minus 163 they have this on Caesars. So they really like this one on the sports books. You can see in seven of his last ten games, He's gone over this total of three and a half catches. His last two, six and nine catches against Washington. Atlanta's been throwing the ball a ton, which has been a massive change from the beginning of the season. And Tampa Bay ranks 28th in receptions allowed so far this season, which is near the bottom of the league. So we could see that continue in this one. And looking at the target share, He's seen 24% of the target share in the last two games. Got 12 versus Washington and 9 against Houston. So they're absolutely peppering passes to Drake London. And I just think this line is going to be too low. You may notice this if you're watching this a while after I recorded this video that some of these lines do change. We do post the YouTube video picks in the VIP Discord as well. So you guys can get in on some of these lines before they change. But our next pick here is going to be Josh Jacobs. 72 and a half rush yards. We're taking the over. I've been smashing unders on Jacobs basically all year just because this Raiders offense has been so bad. Now they have no Jimmy G. I think they really have to just force the ball to Jacobs. In this game against Chicago, obviously he's going to be a good matchup. If we look at Jacobs over here on Outlier, you could see uh, 73 and a half is his line here. So we're getting a bit of a discount, 72 and a half by one yard. He finally went over one of his totals last week, and I think he's going to continue that. Finally got a game here, 77 last week. So I think he's on the rise, and I do like this one. I think it's a little misleading. Chicago is eighth against the rush because they have such a bad pass defense that people have been passing against them. But with the Raiders... I think they're going to be running the ball a ton in this one because they probably are not going to trust Brian Hoyer to be throwing the ball 30-plus times. And I think they do get, get back to the run here. We've also seen an increase in rush attempts for Jacob from starting the season with 19, then down to 9, two games with 17, 20 two weeks ago, and then 25 last week when Hoyer did step in for a bit. So I do like Jacobs this week. Finally, I think he's in a good spot here against Chicago and I think that the Raiders can just be up in this game by running Jacobs the ball and trying to keep the ball out of Justin Fields hands if Fields plays which it honestly looks like Fields is probably not going to play either so I think the Raiders can win a pretty low scoring game here by just giving Jacobs the ball and running the clock and holding a small lead for the whole game so that's going to be my second pick there the third pick, we're going to a game stack. We're going to a quarterback wide receiver stack, Geno Smith, over his pass yards of 251 and a half. Geno has been very hit or miss so far this year. And if we look up 
Gino. Look up some stats for him over here on Outlier. You can see that his line is at 253 and a half. We're getting it at 251 and a half on the over, and uh, it opened at 255 and a half. So definitely some some good value here. Coming down here, just looking at this season, he's gone over this total three times. But when he hasn't gone over it, he's you know gone way under. But gonna have a pretty decent matchup here. Arizona ranked 22nd in the pass, and I think Gino is. In for a big game in this one. They have been throwing the ball a good amount, 61% of the time, 63% of the time. And then last week they threw 64% of the time. So I do like Gino in this game. And we're getting to some savings here. Opened at 255.5. Now it's at 251.5. So the stack I'm going to go with, you know, we could come here to DK Metcalf. But I'm actually going to go to Tyler Lockett. And I'm surprised that DK Metcalf has a prop up here because he hasn't practiced all week and may not play. And even if he does play, I could see it being one of those games where he doesn't get as many snaps as he's accustomed to because I feel like whenever DK is a little banged up, he like sometimes doesn't even finish games or doesn't play as much. So I'm going to go into Tyler Lockett actually in this one. And I think it's going to be a big boost if DK doesn't play or if he's limited and I think the Lockett's just going to be in for more work in this one. Looking at Tyler Lockett, his last game, he had 94 receiving yards, barely missed it in this one. And then against Detroit, he hit it as well. Receiving yards for Arizona, giving up the 27th most in the league. Aside from week one, we've seen six or more targets in every single game here for Lockett. So good to see the volume is still there and I think we could see maybe a season high in targets and catches and yards in this game although the yards may be hard to be 94 but I think the volume is going to be there for Lockett like that pairing with Geno Smith and I think DK will end up actually playing but be more limited in how many snaps he's actually going to play which will help out Lockett in that stack there and then for the final pick Going to go to Mac Jones, and we're going to take the pass plus rush yards on the under here. And Mac Jones here has been struggling severely after having a massive yardage game in week one. If we come look at these stats, this one has been all over the place. Opened at 202.5, went up to 205.5 now. Uh, we're getting here at 204.5, and, and we're taking the under on it. If you look at his last three games, has gone under this one. Buffalo is ranked 7th against the pass, which is giving up 190 yards passing this year, which is not a lot. And also, we've seen Bailey Zappi come in twice for Mac Jones when they were down like 30, so he may not even get a full game here because the Patriots are like 10 or 11 point underdogs in this game. It also is supposed to be raining like the entire game in this one and with winds 13 to 15 miles per hour, which is not ideal either for throwing, especially against a tough Buffalo defense. So I could definitely see this being a ugly game here where Buffalo kind of dominates on defense and just runs the ball out and Mac Jones doesn't get that many opportunities to throw and Mac Jones you know just not really a runner at all so basically if he does hit the pass yards uh, at 196 he still would need nine rushing yards here to actually cover this total and Mac Jones I mean looking at his last 10 he's actually run fairly effective but this chart is a little misleading six out of ten because the total for yards is four and a half, but he really needs nine. So actually the seven and five are not hit. So it's only in the last four of 10, he's gone over the yardage that we would need him to get. And then looking at 2022, it's a completely different story. In 14 games, he hit over four and a half in seven, but it's really actually only four games because you got to take out these three here. So it would really be in four of 14 games. So that's going to be my last pick. If you guys enjoyed this one, consider trying the free trial for Outlier here. There's a lot of cool things you could do. You could come here to Mac Jones Passing Yardage and say games without Devontae Parker, and it'll change 
the entire graphs system here. Or you could come over here and say, you know, games only with Hunter Henry and look at those stats as well. So a lot of cool things you could do, only home games, what his stats are, come down here. There's a bunch of other stats that you can look at. So I definitely consider trying the free trial for this. Also come over here, get in the VIP if you want, $10 off with code 10 back. I'll put that down in the description. Or just join up in the free section of the Discord as well. That'll be linked down there. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, subscribe to the channel. Check out all the tools and stuff we talked about in this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.